In this problem, we are given the following circuit diagram here. We need to use the mesh current method to find our I of G. To use our mesh current method, we are going to have currents in this part of our problem, this part of our problem, and this part of our problem. So there's currents flowing through each of these individual parts and they're going towards the right like this. That's how we are going to draw them. And then once we've drawn all of our currents, we are going to label them I1, I2, and I3. It doesn't really matter the order, but I like to do it like this. You just have to stay consistent with what you order it for. So now that we have it ordered, we are going to start solving this with mesh current. If we look at our I1, this is the part for our I1, we can see that the current flowing through it is going to be this 5 with the angle 0 degrees amps. And it's going to flow through the entire thing because all of our impedances are in series. So that is the current for our I of 1. Now we need to find our I of 2. For our I of 2, we can see that we don't have just a current flowing through here. So we can just add our I of 2 impedances together. We have I of 2 out front, and then we have 5 plus J times 2 inside of here because we need to add the impedances. Next, we can add this voltage. We can see that it's going down into the positive out of the negative. That's the way the voltage drops. So we are going to have a plus 5 with a negative 90 degree angle. Now we need to subtract some things. We can see that our I3 is going this way and our I1 is going this way. That's the opposite direction of our I2. So we're going to have to subtract our I1 and I3. We're going to do a minus the impedance that it's over, which is J2 times the 5 with our 0 degrees in here because that's our I1. Same thing for our I3, we're gonna have a minus with the five impedance out here, and we know that our current is just I of G. So this is I of G, and this is all set equal to zero. Now we can go about and simplify this. I'm going to combine this J2 with our five right here, and then I'm going to add that with our five negative 90 degrees. To add these, I'm gonna put them in the rectangular form, and the rectangular form is that we have the number out here, and then in parentheses, we have the cosine of our angle plus the j times the sine of our angle. And that's how we convert it to rectangular form. From this, we're going to get these values. We can have. So now I'm going to factor in this j2 here. That's going to give us a negative 10j, and this is also 0. So I'm going to rewrite this one more time without the zeros. From here, we can add our j's together. And from this, we are going to get our equation is i of 2 times 5 plus j2 in parentheses minus j15 is equal to 5 ig. Now, we need to solve for our i of 2. And to solve for i of 2, we are going to look at our other part, which is this i3 right here. We haven't looked at this yet, so we're going to do that now. For our i3, we are going to have the ig out front because that's the current flowing through it. ig is kind of equivalent to our i3. And then we're going to have our impedances in here. We have a J3 minus a J3 plus 5. And then we can close that off. Now we are going to have to subtract our I of 1 because we know it's going this way. And our I of 2 because we know it's going in this way. Which is the opposite direction of our I of G. So we will have a minus then the impedance which is negative J3. Times our current which is 5 with the angle of 0 minus our impedance, which is 5, and then the current flowing through our I2. We don't know the current, so it's just going to be I2, and this is all set equal to 0. From here, we can cancel out these J3s, and then I'm going to rewrite it as I of G. Combining all of these together, I will make this a positive, because a negative and negative is a positive, so we are going to just have a plus J15. Also, um, this I of G is going to multiply to this 5, so it's really going to be 5 I of G. I left that part out. And then we're going to have the angle 0 right here, minus 5 I2, and this is all equal to 0. If we factor out the 5s, we are just going to have a 3 in the middle, and everything else is going to be 1. I'm going to move the I2 over so that we have our I2. And then we're going to get that our I of G plus 3 with our 0 degrees. And if we plug this into the calculator to make it rectangular form, we're just going to get a J3. The J is already out here, so that's what that's for. And then we move the I2 over, and the, so it's equal to I2. And this is going to be our second equation to this problem. From here, we're going to plug this I2 back into our equation right here. And then we are going to get this as our new equation. From here, we're going to multiply these two together, these two together, these together, and these together, and then add them. 
So when we first do this, we are going to have a 5i of g, and then we will have a plus j 2i of g, and then we will have a plus j 15. And then since we're combining two j's, it's going to turn it into a negative because one j is equivalent to a square root of a negative one. And the square root of a negative one times the square root of another negative one is just negative one, which is why we're going to have a minus six here. Then we have our minus j 15, this is outside of this, is equal to our five i of g. From here, we can see a few things that we cancel out. We're gonna cancel out this five of i of g because we can just subtract it from both sides. Our j 15 and our negative j 15 are gonna to add together and give us zero. And that means we are just going to be left with a j times two i of g minus six is equal to zero. Now we are going to get i of g by itself. To do this, we're gonna divide everything by two and then move the six over to our right side. So we're gonna have a positive six on the right side divided by two is three. So we're gonna have j i of g is equal to three. From here, we're gonna divide both sides by j. We're gonna get i of g is equal to three over j. Remember, when we flip a j to the top, it's gonna to become a negative j. So we're gonna get i of g is equal to negative j times three. And this is the answer for our problem. We can see that we don't have a magnitude. So when we write it into our actual answer, we're gonna say that our magnitude is zero. And then our j right here is going to be a negative three. And that is how you go about solving this problem. If you want more introduction to circuit analysis, there's a playlist as well as notes that cover the entire coursework linked in the description below the like button.